Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. Tonight I'm going to make a simple Italian dish. Tonight I'm going to make polenta. Okay, well, people say, yeah, polenta, okay, cornmeal, yellow cornmeal, a little butter, a little salt, a little pepper. It's just polenta. And yeah, it's just polenta, but I'm going to make it a little bit different, okay? Tonight I'm going to make polenta with a mushroom ragu. In Italian, it's called polenta con funghi di ragù, okay? Polenta with a mushroom ragù. It's a nice, simple dish. It's easy. It's delicious. If you love mushrooms, you will love this dish, okay? I make a fantastic polenta con funghi di ragù. So, as usual with YouTube, 15 minutes. Let's get going, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, let's get started. To make the mushroom ragu, I have right here a quarter of a cup of olive oil and about four tablespoons of ghee instead of butter. You could use butter if you want, but lately I've been using ghee. Okay. I use the ghee because the hard solids from the butter have been removed the way the stuff that'll clog your arteries. Okay, now two this quarter of a cup ooh, turn the heat down. Two this quarter of a cup of olive oil and about four tablespoons of ghee. I'm adding about four to six ounces of bacon ends and pieces. Okay? This is gonna be very rich. This is not a diet meal. Okay, I'm going to cook this bacon down until it's crispy, and then I'm going to remove the bacon. I'm only using it for flavor. If you want to add the meat back into the dish at the end, you're welcome to do so. But at this point, all I'm doing is reducing the meat down and infusing the oil with the flavor of the bacon. I use ends and pieces because uh, it's a great value. I get about three pounds, maybe four pounds of ends and pieces for about the same price as about a pack of bacon. And I have more control over how much fat from the bacon goes into the dish. I trim a lot of it. So I'm going to reduce this down and then we're going to move on to the next step which is adding in the onions and shallots. All right, now what I have here is one cup of onion and one cup of shallot swimming around in some brown bits created by sauteing the bacon into the oil. Now, we don't want to caramelize these, okay? We don't want to caramelize these, okay? But we want to add a little bit of salt to the flavor layer. And we want to add a little bit of black pepper. Not really too much, right about there. Create the flavor layer. Okay. We don't want to brown these onions and we don't want to brown these shallots. But we want to cook them until they're translucent. That's going to take about two or three minutes. And then I'll be back for the next step. Okay, the shallots and the onions have become translucent. And the next step is to put in the mushrooms. Now, this is two pounds of mushrooms, and it might seem like a lot, but believe me, it's going to shrink, okay? This is two pounds of mushrooms. This is one pound of crimini, baby portobello, and one pound of white button, and then half a pound, half a pound, 
of rehydrated shiitakes. Okay? Now, a little bit of salt, just a little bit. Help sweat them down. Little bit of black pepper. Make that flavor layer. Okay. Move it around. All right. It's going to be good. Move them around with the onions. There we go. There we go. Move around with the onions. And then I'm going to put a cover on them and cook them for about three minutes and let them sweat down and we'll move on to the next step. All right, the liquid in here has reduced and the mushrooms are starting to brown. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add about half a cup of tomato paste. I'm gonna add a half a cup of tomato paste right here to the center. Okay. I'm going to flatten that out and I'm going to cook the tomato paste for about two to three minutes right here in the center, get it nice and cooked, get it nice and toasty and then I'm going to mix it up with the mushrooms and we're going to move on to the next step. Alright, the mushrooms are beginning to brown and stick to the bottom of the pan. See? And into this I'm going to pour one cup of Pinot Grigio. Okay. Now this recipe calls for a dry white wine. Okay. But I like to use Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio is fairly dry. Okay. But you could use a marsala or you could use a soave since those are extremely dry Italian white wines but I happen to like a Pinot Grigio because the Pinot Grigio like the Pinot Noir adds a certain amount of sweetness and just the right amount of acid to cut the fat. Now I'm not much of a wine guy, but I do like Pinot Noir and I do like Pinot Grigio. But like I say, I'm not much of a wine guy. I'm more of a I'm more of a spirits guy. I see dead people everywhere. The wine is evaporated and the mushrooms are beginning to stick to the pan again so we're going to go for a secondary deglaze we deglazed with the wine and now we're going to deglaze with the fluid from the rehydrated shiitake mushrooms there we go that's going to add a whole lot of mushroomy goodness Scrape off those brown bits and to that we're going to add some chicken stock, about a cup. There we go. That's about a cup of heated chicken stock. This process to make this ragu is all about sticking to the pan 
and deglazing. Sticking to the pan and deglazing. And we do that a couple of times. And then the mushrooms will be nice and tender. And then we can move on to making the polenta. Okay, I'm just scraping those bits off the bottom. Okay, scraping those bits. And I'm going to let this reduce. And I'm going to keep on adding stock as necessary as this reduces. And I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, at this step, I add my sachet. You could add it earlier, but with this amount of liquid and concentration, I add my sachet. This is a sachet of rosemary, thyme, sage, and a bay leaf. Okay? All tied up in a nice little sachet or bouquet garni. Okay? I'm going to add that right now. And I'm also going to add some garlic right now about three to four cloves okay give it a nice flavor note mix it in okay. and as this recipe reduces I will be adding more chicken stock okay I'm not really adding any more salt and pepper there was enough salt in the bacon okay but you'll adjust the flavors later so here we go. All right. And I'm going to put the lid on and leave just a little bit for the steam to escape. And as that sauce reduces, I'll keep on adding chicken stock. And then we'll move on to the next step. The ragu is still cooking, and the liquids have reduced a little bit. And I scraped off some brown bits. Now I'm adding a little more chicken stock. Just enough to keep the mushrooms covered. There we go. Just enough to keep those mushrooms covered. Okay. And then I'm going to allow this amount of liquid to reduce again. And then I'm going to add my final one or two ladlefuls of stock to this ragu and let it reduce to a consistency that I like and then I'm going to make the polenta. Alright, there's the last of the chicken stock. Okay guys, so what I have here is two cups of chicken stock and two cups of half and half and I'm going to slowly add one cup of polenta yellow cornmeal now you can use the instant stuff you know five minute polenta I'm not doing that here I'm using full-on hardcore yellow cornmeal and I'm going to bring it up to a boil from cold here and then add the herbs and spices necessary and then we'll move forward okay so I got the polenta to a boil and then to a simmer and right there I'm adding you can add some butter I'm adding about two tablespoons of ghee instead of butter I'm using a lot of ghee lately instead of butter because the hard proteins, the whey, has been taken out of the ghee. All right, and that melts in there really quick at the simmer. Okay. And then I'm going to add a little bit of rosemary. There we go. A little bit of thyme. Make a nice savory polenta. 
and a little bit of marjoram. There we go. And I'm going to mix this in. And I'm going to cook this polenta for about another five or ten minutes. I'm going to add a little salt. little Italian sea salt, little bit of black pepper, and mix that in. I'm going to keep it on low, because I want my polenta to be nice creamy, not overly thick. If I have to add a little stock to it, I will. But at the moment, I don't have to, so we're going to let it go. Okay guys, the polenta is done, and it's time to plate up this dish. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, so there you have it. Polenta con ragu de fongi. Polenta with a mushroom ragu. It's delicious. It's easy to make. It's comfort food at its easiest, at its best. Try this recipe. Make it your own. You can even add some cheese to the polenta at the end. I didn't, okay? But at the end, just prior to serving, you can add some kind of Italian cheese to the polenta if you want and then plate it with the ragu. Now make no mistake, this is not a mushroom sauce. This is a mushroom ragu that can be used as a sauce. But make this recipe, make it your own. It's easy, it's simple, it's delicious. I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.